Hello, my name is Ronald Dodd and this is the second in my series of how to maintain Hornby 00 trains. Today we will be looking at common problems that can be found in these locos. Here we have a small tank and we run it and it appears to be working just fine. But when we look at the amp meter, you'll we'll see that the amp is running about 0 0.6, over 0 0.6 amps. The maximum for these locos is about 0.65 continuous levels. And anything over that could cause a problem. Also, when we hit, hitch it up to a few carriages, we can see that the wheels are skidding. And this only has four carriages on at the moment. And you can see it's, it does work, but it's skidding and any more than four would, would hardly work at all. So let's see if we can do something about this. Okay, first we need to remove, uh, well we can look at it the bottom side first. Now a lot of people might think it's the, the, the um, magnet problem, but uh, we can have a look and see if it is a magnet problem. Also the skidding is, is normally either the wheels are oily, which, which you can see that they're, they're dry, or the spring tension on these pickups is too tight, which they do feel a little bit tight. So that's one thing we'll have to look at. So we'll take the body off. I use a larger screwdriver first just to unnip it, keeping it well away from the paintwork, and then the small one to unscrew it. There we go, the body just lifts off. Okay, we'll uh, start by taking off the, uh, the, the brush holders. There, the spring has popped out. on the other side now right there I can see what I consider a problem the spring is sticking out way too much for the best performance I prefer to have the spring about flush with, with this face when before you put the plug in and let's have a look what's wrong. The spring looks in good condition and there. Now that's to me is a problem. The brush is much too long. Sometimes it's a little bit difficult to take these um, out of the tubes but you can use a, a, a fine piece of um, a wire or fishing line to poke it through. Okay, now I shall remove the the pickup shoe. You 
and I just spin the nut off and it comes away quite easily. I have a little tin on the side that I keep all my pieces in so I don't lose anything. Put that to the side as well. Now, this is the uh, pickup shoe assembly and we can just take that apart and there you go. Right. Now that, is, that, that there is the problem. You can see the curvature on this uh, spring. These should be straight. A lot of people think they get a better pick up if it's uh, bent a little bit with more pressure but it just wears out your pickups and doesn't improve the pickup so this wants to be teased back into a straight position again I can't think uh, see as straight as you can and then I use a, a track cleaning rubber normally just to clean it all over Now this, the same is with this, you can see there's a little bend in this, this is often a problem as well. It allows the pickup shoe to drop down too low and it can jam up between the rails in the points. So just straighten this out a little bit. There, now we have a straight unit. And I use the same again, bit of a track rubber clean out for there. Making sure everything is clean, we can then put it back together. Oops. Another problem we sometimes find, well nearly always find, is, is wear in the, in the shoe right here where it runs on the rail. This one's not so bad but uh, they can get deeply worn and this can cause uh, the occasional short circuit. So what I often do is get a, get a little grinder or a polisher, a Dremel here, and I can just polish either side of the wear. And this will extend the life of your pickup shoe. I can polish that a bit more on a bit of uh, on a bit of sandpaper as well. Now you could even use a file. There, you can spend a bit more time on that if you like and make it really nice. It improves the appearance of it as well. Okay, now. String goes in with the little dimples down. And there's a little space so that goes. This, this is often missing as well. You can use a little bit of card or something to replace it if it is missing. Okay this just fits together like so. If you hold it together quite tightly you should be able to just... They're almost floppy, they're not quite floppy but almost floppy. They won't, they won't uh, flop around so much when you shake it but they're just uh, they give a very light pressure on the on the track okay now back to the chassis another thing to do while we're 
we got it at this point is we can just uh, thin down a q-tip and we can just clean out the tubes a little bit and the same in this one now the commutator should have a little bit of end movement because it heats up during operation which will cause expansion and if there isn't a, just a small amount of end play in there it will uh, it will start getting tight so you can just uh, rock the wheel backwards and forwards and just look for the tiniest amount of movement uh, and this has got well, not even half a mil there so I'll just give it a fraction more clearance so you just undo the nut and, uh, just un unscrew that screw it just a fraction and then nip the nut up again just to try it and I don't know if you can see it on the video but there is just a little bit of movement in there okay now I'll just check that it's tight enough now there okay now that should turn on it could be could be able to turn it which uh, I can turn it if I there okay now also um, you can check all the wheels are free I don't advise taking the the magnet unit off because it'll lose some of its some of its uh, magnetic strength and therefore weaken the the whole unit right, now we'll put this back together uh, I've already it's already been lubed it is a good opportunity to to, to clean inside you can use a pair of tweezers and a, and a piece of paper it's always a good opportunity to get in there and give it but this this was recently cleaned and uh, well I thought it was and looped so give it a little clean around I'll give it a couple of drops just inside I'm not too worried about the lubrication at the moment yeah. now this goes in there's little cutouts in the fiber board to uh, to make it easier to lubricate so you put that goes to the front I think you can just about see it there. Okay, now we put uh, the next piece on, which is It's a little bit awkward and then the nut goes on and I use the little cotton wool bud as well again to, to hopefully get it started on the thread. pliers just to finish it up. Now before you completely tighten it you need to take a look at the alignment of the pickups down the center line of the train. That doesn't look too bad but if I turn it you'll be able to see that there is enough play there to make it 
out you can go from that to there so you need to get, get it as close to the middle as you can because also it'll, sometimes it will pop down in the gap between the between the points if it's not in the middle and your plane your train will come to a sudden sudden stop uh, that looks about good I just finish nipping that up you never over tighten any of this stuff okay now to overcome the problem with the spring pressure being too great on the armature what I normally do is I get these they're rather long and I, I just cut them in half so so you don't need to waste them you can use them twice so that's what you end up with end up with two pieces like that now these are normally worn concaved on the end because they've been rubbing against the uh, the, uh, the uh, armature so what I do is I just get a file and just touch the sharp edges off like so okay, we can fit that in there and then and then we'll put the spring in now if you look you can just see the spring is right there it's flush at the end that's how that's perfect for me and I don't even push the plug in all the way I'll push it in just three quarters of the way in so it probably has about three mil of tension on, on that spring and the same on the back end I filed these flat on the ends before so they don't need doing again I oh, felt a little bit of pressure then no that's okay it's just got a little bit of the spring is just a little bit bent on the end so I'll, I'll put that to the outside so it's not going to foul at the other end okay now that spring is just protruding or I don't know maybe a not much more than a millimeter so it's not a problem uh, so I'll do the same I'll put this in but just push it in maybe halfway if these plugs are loose you can just splay them out a little bit with a screwdriver to make them so they're a nice snug fit right then a quick check I think everything's okay okay now well put the body back on I, I won't put the the screw in for the coupling in for now just to try it okay then okay let's give this a, a try yeah, it feels okay looks okay look at the amp meter we have less than half I think oh, about half half the amp so about 0.3 or less even and it might get even less than this after it's been running for a while and the, and the and the bushes have uh, worn in and let's see what the traction is like there. 
no real detectable skid there. And the same four coated there. Let's go and pick up another coat. Then. There's, there's five coated. And it will probably probably pull six or more without without too much difference. So there you go. It's not a magnet problem, it was just maintenance problem. Thank you for watching this movie.